Hey, plumber boy, mustache man, your worst nightmare has arrived. Pack up your stuff. I got a little surprise for you here. Yeah, real time, 3D, lush organic environments. How's that make you feel, buddy? Ah yes, the PlayStation Classic is here, and with that comes an in-depth close look and review of Sony's new miniature PlayStation. The company announced the micro console, unwittingly of course, to Nintendo's actions, and that's a joke by the way, this is clearly a device inspired by that of the NES Classic and SNES Classic, and with Sony now being a 23 year gaming veteran, they feel that they're finally ready to tug on the hearts of nostalgia and bring us this which upon the announcement I think many gamers were totally fine with. Yes, Sony, bring us a micro PlayStation with the very best games. Remind us why this console was so great and so important. Or so you would think. Now the box is pretty small, it's actually smaller than an original PlayStation, and the experience of opening this box is quite honestly an exhilarating experience. I don't normally get this jazz from opening consumer electronics, but for many of you this is reminiscent of something you may have done over 20 years ago. It's strange how that same magic almost carried through here in this box, although maybe it was just the fact that the outer imagery of the box art looks great and it's totally shelf worthy. But anyway, once inside, you will eventually find your PlayStation Classic, two controllers, an HDMI cable, and mini USB cable. Much like Sony promised, they are not providing an AC adapter. This didn't totally bother me right away because I of course had many on hand, but it rubs me the wrong way knowing that they're pretty much doing everything they can to squeeze every last bit of profit out of this thing. In hand, the PlayStation Classic feels nice, but the controllers feel great. Perhaps it's a placebo effect, but to me they feel as genuine and original as they were before. Except this time, of course, they end off as USB. Upon closer examination, you can see that the Classic is pretty much a nice solid piece of kit, with two USB ports up front, and it's HDMI and power ports in the back. The disc tray doesn't lift up at all, so please don't try that, and the buttons up top feel very clicky and responsive. I basically have no qualms with how they've designed it. It's tiny like it's supposed to be, it's built well, but more importantly it's as true to the PS1 form as it could be. This is one of the few areas where Sony did really well. How about a size comparison, huh? Every first generation PlayStation, here it is.
Setting it up is super easy, and don't worry, I'm not just plugging in a regular PlayStation. I've had this 19-inch Vizio sitting around for a while, and I figured it would be a great fit to play the Classic on. As you can see, you choose your language, you get a quick start guide, and you're off to the races, until you realize the racetrack is incredibly dull. The menu has no heart or soul put into it whatsoever, and this is something where you really think that they could have had some fun and design a really cool interface to navigate through. But you're left with this rotation of games on a vaguely bluish purple background with beep signaling you're checking out your fine selection of games. Speaking of games, let's really talk this out. There's 20 games total, and when the PlayStation Classic's full lineup was announced, I, like many people, was disappointed. Of course, you're missing so many fantastic PlayStation games for games like Destruction Derby, Jumping Flash, Rainbow Six, and Intelligent Cube, but the thing is, I don't really have a problem with those games. If anything, I think they should be there. But my issue off the jump was that there should have been more games, period. Instead of compromising on 20 titles, why not up the ante and do, say, 35 to 50 games? If you're going to take a page out of Nintendo's book, really spice it up. Add enough titles to the point where you can add all the great classics and include some niche ones too. And while I understand licensing 20 year old games can be extremely difficult given that some developers and publishers may not even exist anymore, or soundtrack issues could also play a big role, but Sony is a big corporation with the power, means, and connections to certainly do a better list than this. The other end of it, of course, is that recent remasters and remakes create a conflict of interest. We just saw Crash and Spyro remade, and we've got Resident Evil 2 coming, and a few more. So it stands to reason that this may be an issue, but I don't really buy that, given that the purpose of the classic and the purpose of a completely remade game is dramatically different. You don't see gamers clamoring for Resident Evil 2 on the classic because they'd rather play that over the remake. It's silly. And my apologies for talking so much. Let's listen to that sweet, sweet nectar. Getting back to business, another odd decision of the classic is that some of the games in the compilation use the PAL versions instead of the NTSC versions. This means those games will run at a slightly lower frame rate. Now for the most part, my time with the classic has been okay, and it was just that. Okay, the emulation appears fine, but seeing them pick noticeably worse versions of games makes very little sense to me. Now the choice to not do DualShock controllers is also one that is okay with me, because it's clear that they were going for a true authentic original PlayStation, thus no DualShock was around yet. But in the grand scheme of things, the best use case scenario for the classic at this point is the homebrew scene, and for many that will probably be a very lucrative option. But honestly, the biggest tragedy here is that Sony could have knocked this out of the park and instead wrote their whole paper in one night to hand in the next morning. When Nintendo released the NES and SNES Classic, you know it's flattering when you see gamers discuss and even hope that Sony adopts the idea and does a mini PlayStation. Well, lo and behold, Sony announced it, and the reception all around was pretty positive, aside from the people that were still clamoring for backwards compatibility, not understanding that this was supposed to be a cool nostalgic device, but that's the worst part, now it's not even that. This is just a great box and a console to display on your shelf at this point. And, you know, I may humor it a little bit and play a few games, but this was a complete missed opportunity. The legacy, games, and importance of the PlayStation will surely live on, but you won't have the classic to thank for that. Thank you so much for watching this review, and if you haven't yet, subscribe for the best PlayStation news, reviews, and updates here on YouTube. I will see you all in my next video, and you take it easy.